So apparently there's a media outlet in Peru who has their hands on a 5800X3D from AMD and they're not under a non-disclosure agreement because they did not get this as a review sample and did not have to sign any kind of documentation, which means yesterday and today, they've been releasing some of their preliminary test results. This is not a full review yet. We do have lots of information, but it's not the you know entire write-up with tons of games and uh, comparison to a bunch of other processors and all that. Because I mean, honestly, they know that people want this information now and if they get it out now before everybody else, right, that's gonna get all the clicks. And hey, I'm doing a video about it and the link to their article will be in the description as usual. But anyway, so Z Zankso Gaming, Z Zankso, I, I don't know how to pronounce that, guys. Also, I'm using Google Translate on this website. Now, I did take Spanish one a few times, but uh, Peru does speak Spanish, right? That's not, they're not one of the Portuguese ones. That they, they gotta be Spanish. I'm probably now just offended everybody in Peru. Anyway, let's just keep going. <laughs> So their test system specifications, which is usually relevant, make sure that it doesn't seem like it'll be bottlenecked by something. Now it does seem to be 16 gigabytes of RAM in a two by eight configuration on a uh, Placa Madre, a motherboard. <laughs> it's an X570 uh, Aorus Master uh, motherboard. Uh, they've got a Samsung 980 Pro SSD with another Silicon Power A55 two terabyte SSD. So, you know, and they've got an RTX 3080 Ti Founders Edition. And they do say that, well, the RAM, it's only only 16 gigabytes. I mean, it is a Samsung B-Die apparently. So it looks like a pretty solid test system. And then they just start screen capturing some res results. So this is what I mean about this not being a full on review with a nice write up. They're just kind of screen capping some scores and sometimes comparing it to things. That's gonna be kind of small and difficult to look at. Did they actually like write up their thoughts on the results here? Um, now they are mentioning, by the way, now this is actually pretty important. Um, that they are using some uh, a beta BIOS that should be updated for support and optimization with the 3D V cache. That's actually a pretty big deal. Uh, and they were mentioning that when they've seen other people's scores for this leak, that they're not sure if the other people with those scores and, and those leaking would have had access to that beta, beta BIOS um, as well. Now they've got a bunch of tests here. I don't know how much I wanna dwell on all of them. But uh, the main thing that we're seeing in the synthetic benchmarks is that the single core performance is actually sometimes slightly slower than the 5800X. And in general, the synthetic benchmark results that they're getting can be a bit slower than the 5800X non-3D. Now, why, could, why would that be happening? So the big deal with the 3D V cache is that it's going to give them lots of cash, but not everything, like, like yeah, there are people gonna buy this for lots of money. No, it's gonna give the processor lots of cash to work with, but not every application actually does, you know, needs that or will benefit widely from that. This is mostly targeted at gaming and we will see at least one gaming benchmark result, which does look a lot more promising. Um, but they're seeing that even like an i5-12400 or 12400F uh, is having higher single core performance than this, uh, you know, 5800X3D. And um, let's see, it looks like the 12900K, which by the way is a lot more money than this. So th that's another thing to kind of get into here is the, <laughs> we're in a weird situation here where the 5800X3D is coming in as the very last and fastest gaming processor for the AM4 platform from AMD. But then you've got it, so like for world's best gaming processor, it'll be competing with the 12900K and I guess, well, the 12900KS, uh, which is just, you know, the, the super binned version of the 12900K and all that, but they're not priced the same. And also the 12900K and 12900KS are having more cores. They're gonna be way better for multi-threading and productivity workloads. They cost way more. So we're, it's a weird situation. They're not, it's really, this thing is just targeted at gaming. And I wanna make sure I'm bringing that up as we scroll through these 
maybe underwhelming uh, results. Now they have a bunch of these results, but do they compare them to anything, right? Um, I did pull up an article uh, about this from Video Cards, and I think that, you know, they did actually, you know, since these these were a little bit hard for you guys probably to read on your screen here, and I don't have time to edit this video and do the zoom-ins and all that. Um, basically, we're seeing the AMD scores here at 617 and 6506, uh, definitely being lower than 12900K reference data. Uh, that was in the Cinebench results. Uh, in Blender Benchmark, uh, they were coming out 3.1% to 11% faster than the original 5800X, uh, but they're mentioning that there's not enough samples here for that to be super reliable. Um, and that is uh, th th those results here. So see, you know, the 5800X got some various results here. The most, uh, you know, number of benchmarks ran um, getting that score, 148, that's quite a bit. Um, anyway, the X3D, we're obviously just getting a couple of runs. It does look to be an improvement there. But I really want to just jump over to the gaming benchmarks. If you guys want to take a closer look at all of these little screen captures and zoom in and try to see the results and track down comparisons, like I said, link will be in the description. Um, but they did get their first gaming benchmark up and running, and they do have a comparison with the, I believe it's the 12900K, uh, not the KS, but we'll, we'll take a look on that. Now, um, so they're describing their methodology here. So, so far, this is just Shadow of the Tomb Raider, but they're going to be doing more. And they said that they were working with CapFrame X and using CapFrame X's uh, testing methodology for this uh, benchmark, which is at 720p. So I know this does, that's what they're trying to address here, and this does confuse some people. It's like, who cares what the results are in 720p? Well, the idea when you're doing a CPU benchmark is a lot of times to reduce the GPU load as much as possible so you're seeing the true limits of just the CPU, and you're not actually simulating real-world gaming results, which honestly is why a lot of people end up buying a better CPU than they actually need, in my opinion, for gaming, because they're like, this one's this much better. It's like, yeah, but if you're, if you're limited by your GPU, that's irrelevant. But anyway... <laughs> Um, for the eSports players and people who turn low settings, lower resolutions, high-end GPU, that, that's more relevant. But that's what they're talking about here in this big red box. Anyway, same kind of test setup that we just saw. And here we go. So here's the you know actual screen cap of all the results. But then they, luckily on this one, actually did give us some comparisons. And they do have a comparison with the KS, apparently. So, in this one, we are seeing, and this seems too good to be true, guys, to be 100% honest, but, but here you go. Uh, the 5800X3D is getting 231 FPS at these custom low settings 720p, whereas the 12900K and KF are getting about 190 FPS. They're setting that as the baseline when we look at percentages. The 12900K S, which is, you know, your super fancy, super expensive, ultra bin, high clocked 12900K, which is like $740 or something like that. I think that this thing's supposed to launch at five, uh, 450, so like a $300 difference almost. Anyway, the 12900KS uh, is getting, you know, 200 FPS, 5.5%, you know, almost improvement over the 12900K and 5800X3D. That's an almost 22% jump over the 12900K. Now, this is a bit strange because AMD themselves, who are likely to, you know, try to, uh, you know, present themselves in their best light possible, when they announced their 5800X 3D, actually did talk about Shadow of the Tomb Raider and they're claiming up to 1.1x performance of the 12900K. So in other words, a 10% performance jump was all AMD was claiming here. But then again, they were using 1080p high quality, so maybe there was more factored in with the GPU there, and at these 720p custom low settings, maybe it's really has its time to shine a bit here. Um, I'm not 100% sure on that, and I'm excited to see more test results, um, you know, as we go. 
Now, by the way, the 12900KS has been overclocked to 7.45 gigahertz <laughs> and uh, is breaking several world records and all that. But guys, that's not like people are gonna be running that stably. I'm sure this is, you know, uh, <laughs> liquid nitrogen, <laughs> all of that. So don't be expecting 7.45 gigahertz on your home system, unless you really like drip feeding some liquid nitrogen into your system while you're gaming. Maybe hire somebody to do that for you off to the side. You gotta, you know, frames win games, guys. Anyway, let's finish up with some Intel Arc GPU stuff. So I've got a couple of articles here. Um, now, first I saw this last night and it's been updated a bit this morning, uh, but uh, Video Cards was basically reporting on the fact that, hey guys, um, we were supposed to see Intel Arc laptops. Like they were announced, they're theoretically available, but nobody seems to be able to buy one. And even people who did buy one didn't seem to actually get one because a few places did list them on sale. And so video cards reached out to their Twitter followers and nobody seems to have actually bought one. And then they, as we see a, a Intel support tweet replying that, hi, like when can we actually buy an Intel Arc laptop? And Intel basically said uh, second quarter, the end of second quarter of 2022, which was like, um, okay, wasn't the whole thing that these are coming out in quarter one? Did you just announce it at the end of quarter one and then they're not really available until the end of the second quarter? Question mark, that's kind of strange. Um, and then they jump into like, we have seen some going on for sale, but people haven't actually been getting them. Well, apparently there was also some clarification on this. So Video Cards did have a follow-up article here, which is basically saying, okay, according to the same Intel support that they had apologies for the confusion, we had incorrect information, Samsung systems with Intel Art graphics are available now in Korea. And then we'll scale to other regions. Additional OEMs in other regions will have systems in the coming weeks. Coming weeks, how many weeks? I don't know. Um, available now just in Korea? Really? So apparently, video cards dug in here and there is a Galaxy Book 2 Pro on sale on the Korean Samsung website, which by the way is quite expensive. So apparently the US dollar equivalent of this is $2,137. And that's coming with the A350, I believe it is. In other words, the lowest end of the new Arc GPUs. So that's fairly expensive. And they report that their sources in Korea are saying that this is not a particularly popular choice because of the specs of what you're getting for that price. So guys, this has me a little bit nervous about the desktop launch for Arc because I feel like uh, we needed ARC a long time ago. And if they were gonna get it out at the end of quarter one, fine. And I mean, I know it was just the laptops. We were hoping laptops come out and then soon we get the desktop chips. But now it's like laptops seem to really have been mostly a paper launch. I guess you can buy one overpriced laptop if you happen to be in Korea. Um, how long until we actually get desktop GPUs? At this rate, I'm. I think that they're just gonna be coming out around the same time we start seeing some new chips from AMD and Nvidia, which is disappointing, although the lead chips from AMD and Nvidia's new lineups will definitely be high-end chips, and it usually takes months to phase in the mid-range and low-end. So, you know, since Intel would definitely be competing, competing with the low-end of that segment, maybe it's fine. Also, I'm sure they're gonna sell a lot as just like bundles with OEMs, like just integrated into pre-built systems and all that. But I, I don't think I'm too out of line saying it. I think most of us are, are a little bit um, disappointed with the time frame it's taking on getting all this stuff out here. Anyway, I've gotta start getting my kids up ready for preschool and get myself to work. So I hope all of you have an excellent day.